Adventure 2 Battle, get your donations in for that. All right, I am so excited to let you all know that we are ready for the four-way Ristar race with Crow Noon, Listar, Shime Gabriel, and Harem Scarum. Take it away, y'all. Hello. Hi. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chubbis, please take it away. I'm only kind All of right. here. Yeah, well, no problem. Um, so we have a very light, late 95 Genesis game. If you're not familiar with it, uh, you'll be uh, very familiar with it. We got four of the top runners here. And, uh, and yeah, uh, people putting in uh, some passwords here. What passwords? <laughs> I love you. No, I'll just, oh, I'll just okay. mess around. But yeah, I think I think we're we need to get right into it. If I think we're yeah. trying to make up some time, so if everybody get on the game start. Let's uh, let's get going. You want count us down, Chubs? Yeah, uh, let's do it. Uh, let's do it uh, on the go. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, and go. And uh, good luck, everybody. Um, so yeah, if you're not familiar with this, uh, basically Ristar is too cute to really kill anything, so he just hugs them really hard. Um, <laughs> Greedy has taken over, uh, uh, some of the planets here and it's infected some of the leaders. And our goal here is to go through them and, uh, take the evil out of the, uh... Hug them. Hug them to death. <laughs> I'll hug the evil out of them. Uh, so... So a lot of a lot of the speed tech here revolves around um, just walking because jumping is actually slower, um, and a, a lot of the speed the unique stuff is it comes down to this uh, dark hole here. Um, very very cool physics based mechanic there, and um, next level you'll see a little bit more of that. Uh, but generally it's either uh, you grab it for just a slight amount of time to kind of fling you forward, uh, but there is a uh, what we call star mode, if you hold on to it long enough where you can control your flight um, once you launch off of it, and that's uh, it's actually quite pivotal in a few few areas. Yeah, it's uh, it's good for all the biggest skips. Which is one of those coming up here. And uh, the biggest thing here is uh, you want to activate star mode by rotating around uh, about six times and get over that log, which... Uh, we saw Crow Noon do there, and uh, that helps you skip a uh, shortcut scene where you would normally very cutely bonk into the, the log and knock it down. Yeah, so this game is very charming, and it has a, like a lot of little cute things to it. Like, if you're just going around, right, if you're playing casually, you're going to get up to that log and you're going to hit it, and Ristar goes, oh goodness, I knocked down a tree, and it's like all cute and stuff, but uh, cuteness is slow, so instead we just fly. <laughs> It's an unfortunate how cuteness is slow, but <laughs> but yeah. So we're we're getting mostly everybody to Rio here, which is the end of Flora, and um, quick kill. I, I call this trick assaulting the wizard. Assaulting the wizard. Uh, basically, you climb up the wizard, and uh, you're trying to grab through him. Consider Looks the like... wizard assaulted. Looks like everybody got it here. And uh, yeah, normally if you fall, if, normally he goes through these cycles that have different um, different mechanics, but you can speed it, speed up quite a bit. It's pretty flashy. I, I like that skip quite a bit. And the second world here is uh, is Undertow. Undertow, and or uh, different, considering the different names, since a lot of us are on Japanese. Sure. You'll have to explain sure. that uh, a little bit later, I think. Yeah, the Japanese version is the ideal version to speedrun on, and that's for a couple of reasons, and I'll point that out when we get there. Um, but yeah, swimming in, in most games is, is pretty slow and boring, I'd say, uh, of the time. But it's not the case here. Very <laughs> fast, are, uh, very fun. Really hauls it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it really shows off the, uh, the parallaxing backgrounds too. It's a very bright level. Uh, all all of the all of the worlds and levels are very very bright. I definitely Some of the best on the system. I definitely thought you were about to be like really shows off the blast processing of the Sega Genesis. 
the Superior oh, Council. That is definitely true. <laughs> you were not wrong on that. <laughs> but yeah, this, this game has uh, quite a bit of uh, variation in RNG. Uh, this boss has a little bit of that. Um, most of the RNG is in, in the end uh, level bosses. And um, if you tally it all up, it, it could, you could have as bad RNG as like a minute and a half of just kind of waiting around throughout the game. Which isn't ideal, but it also makes it uh, a little spicier for, for racing. You never really know what's going to happen. Um, everybody's pretty neck and neck here, which is awesome. Um, the next level, you'll start to see some more variation because uh, the end of that level has uh, everybody's favorite OSAT, which has um, up to 30 seconds or so of uh, bad RNG possibility. You just waiting around. Wait, is someone already at OSAT? <laughs> No, no, no. I was about to say, what, a, yeah, what a happened? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm currently yeah. running this game, so I'm unable to, like, actually see what everyone's <laughs> doing. Uh, we had another commentator, uh, but um, it is early, and uh, I, I assume their alarms didn't go off. <laughs> so I'm yeah, here set. I'm sure. My alarms also almost didn't go off. <laughs> Well, I very much appreciate the company yeah. alarms. I, I hope it doesn't detract from <laughs> No, running. no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. But yeah, we're making our way through uh, kind of little, uh, little gauntlet-style rooms. Uh, pretty interesting design. Uh, most of these, you either have to uh, kill a uh, squid mama or this little uh, altar to be able to proceed. Uh -huh. And it's, uh, it's pretty generous checkpoint-wise if you're playing through it casually. It's the... Uh, ooh. That is a cool. Uh-oh. There are health uh, that you can pick up if you take it a little bit slow, but these, these squid mobs are no joke. The little spikes that they throw out can be a pain. Yeah, they're actually really awkward to dodge, and I've played this game literally thousands upon thousands of times, and I have no idea how to dodge them consistently. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's pretty difficult. It has to do with the way that uh, Ristar gets back into his idle swim animation after attacking something, and it's kind of unruly to get to get that the aiming of the swimming correct right after that. So it can be it can be tough. Uh, yeah, we got uh, right. wish for good RNG, y'all. Want we want uh, power bombs of of good of good vibes. Uh, Osak can do six attacks, um, three of which we can hit him during, three of which we cannot. Um, so it is like a 50-50 chance, essentially, um, on whether or not we're able to hit him or not. Okay, I got a bad one. Yeah, that is a bad one. The, the, the one you're kind of looking for is the school of fish, where he kind of bull rushes with the, the school of fish behind him. It guarantees a good pattern after. But, uh, Aaron looks to be here, got pretty decent RNG. Alright, I got two. Okay. Two is fine. That's, like, average. Because they can do, for each, um, for each, like, level of water, he can do two bad ones. Uh, and he has to do one bad one, so just two, like, uh, RNG bad ones. Uh, so we could have a total of like five. So two is like average. Uh, yeah, exactly. If if any of us got five, uh, that would be the saddest thing ever. <laughs> that's that's where that thirty seconds of time lost I was talking about comes in. But yeah, thankfully it didn't look like anybody got quite that bad of luck, and we're, we're pretty neck and neck here. Hands a little bit ahead. Uh, going into this, this actually has uh, one of the actually the no newest developments speed-wise is uh, this little meteor or uh, this little uh, statue you can grab. You can escort to the uh, I'm real bad to the end this. of this section, and uh, you, you put it on the, the ground, and it opens up a little hole, and you go through, and it saves like 20 seconds or something over the prior route. This isn't something that we knew about, like <laughs> oh, like until like a couple years ago, actually. I was randomly messing around with it and threw it, and uh, <laughs> there's a hole. So it's uh, Easter eggs are cool like that, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. There are a couple different methods for it. You can farm the meteors, which is RNG, not very uh, marathon friendly. But most, it looks like everybody just uh, escorted them. 
in year three here. And we're on the uh, everybody's favorite uh, memory box. Yeah. <laughs> the the, <laughs> the meteor. Stars boss. The, the 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 like statue thing is harder than it looks. By the way, it's really precise to throw it over. It is. Just that throw arc is is weird. I am running on no sleep, and memory is not my strong suit. I'm a. <laughs> oh, Wait, time good. for a Again, donation. Nice. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> we have $25 from Alex Adam. Hello from the UK. Loved Ristar when I was growing up, but I can't wait to watch the race. Question to the racers. What's your favorite song from the game? Good luck to all the runners, and thank you to everyone for making this amazing event happen. Um, I think ice cream. Yep, I knew that was, yeah, that's what I figured. That, that one's definitely a close second to me. I like the, oh my gosh. not a one song. I cannot believe I got that first try. Yeah, no, that was <laughs> awesome. This is one of the hardest levels in the game. Um, I would say it is the hardest level. It's got three back-to-back -back really hard uh, pulse swings. It's, it's really difficult to fully optimize, and uh, <laughs> it looks really cool. I like, I like it when it's done well. Woo! got it <laughs> they're, they're they're really precise like it's like it in order to get the best swing it's literally like a two second i mean i mean a two frame like uh full swing and i do it by going one two three four one two three go and releasing on go and that sometimes gets me there but you know you might be a, a frame off and it's really interesting. I, I love the, the the sound cue that is built into it. It's um, I mean they're definitely all precise pulse swings, like at top level speed running. Um, but it it kind of syncs itself up to it. Um, kind of it's just a, it's a really awesome mechanic. It just is very intuitive, but it doesn't take away from how hard some of those pulse swings are. <laughs> they, if, you, if you miss them, they, they they can be very punishing. But yeah, we got everybody here at uh, at a hand here. Um, has quite a bit of RNG to him. Uh, Harem looks like he made his way through here. And uh, we kind of got a couple people at the end. Uh, he goes through a couple um, of flying phases, and generally speaking, you don't want him to go up to the up to the sky, and you, you'd prefer him to go on the ground because it loses two seconds to go up in the air. Uh, it looks like we're, we're actually a really, really neck and neck here. Then like 20 seconds with each other here. That's awesome. Yeah, that they might seem like a lot, but the RNG is pretty swingy in this game. Uh, also, there's some really hard tricks, and like one miss of that will get one of us there. Yep. It's probably my favorite stage. I really like escorting this metro metronome around, uh, these birds. I think this is mine too. I really like this level. Uh, it is, in my opinion, the hardest level in the, in the game in order to speed run. Um, it's very technical, yes. yes. Um, yeah, it's a lot of escorting this metronome around, which isn't anything, which is very unique uh, for the rest of the run. There's nothing quite like that. Um, in order to get perfect on this, there's four tricks that we need to do. Uh, the first is getting the god cycle that we call it, where we do the first part entirely perfectly in order to reach a, a cycle at the right time. Which I got. I don't know about anyone else. Yep, it looks like everybody got it. Yep. Nice. Okay, I'm going to stop talking for like a long time, give me because <laughs> I gotta focus on this. <laughs> no worries. This is the next hardest part. It's uh, this is a frame perfect uh, pull swing, and the, the idea is to uh, fling yourself off before you go into star mode and grab the metronome and uh, and get up to the top of it. But you can escort it and uh, bypass the good 20 second section underneath it. through there. Like Brennan's the last one at it here. Ah, nice. And everybody's through. Uh, this is actually where the, uh, the biggest uh, difference in the, uh, the versions are and why you want to run the Japanese version. Um, and that's because those the little music notes that pop up on the head that telegraph where which head is going to drop, and that doesn't exist in the uh, American version, which is uh, quite bad. Because if you miss the, the, the that first cycle, um, 
about a 20 second or so like interlude. Oh which, my god. Which like she may she may got unfortunately here. So you get to at least see what that is like. <laughs> um but that is that is never ideal, it's unfortunate. It is very difficult to get that one cycle on the US version. Uh, it is a good deal easier on the Japanese version, uh, which is the Very main sure. reason. The Japanese version otherwise is literally like six frames faster because it loses one animation in a later level. So like, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, it is a pretty big deal for that level. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's uh, it, I don't know, I don't know why. There's like no telegraphing of it, but just all of a sudden, Bryce Star can kind of fly in the air. Yeah. And I thought when when they when they localized the game, they wanted to I don't know have a graphic of putting on some different kinds of shoes to like to show you that that was that made sense. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Making our way here through the drums, very musical level sonata. Yeah, I really like the musical theme. Uh, it's awesome. Very pleasant. So the next boss is pretty simple in terms of how we deal with him. Uh, he's He would be really hard if you were a kid, uh, but using the speed strat, he is extremely easy, uh, just a little RNG heavy. Uh, his name is Awek, and uh, all we get knocked back when we hit his pole, but if we're kind of facing away from the pole and hit up, we get knocked into the pole, and we're just allowed to uh, hit it faster and faster. So it's pretty quick and easy. Yeah, it's uh, really awesome to be using that, that knockback like that. Yeah. It's one of those things that if you know, if you know, yeah, this, if that ever bothered you as a kid, <laughs> getting through that, it's, it's the game changer. <laughs> yeah, for it's sure. Awesome. Uh, we probably have time for one or two quick donations. Thanks so much, Liz. Of course. We have. $500 from Sean in 3D. GDQ has always been something I loved looking forward to all year and glad to see you can still pull it off even during a pandemic. Anyone watching, I dare you to donate as well. Y'all can't just, you know, you can't just sit, sit still on that dare. Get your donations in. <laughs> and $25 from Edward trying to hit that 1 million for Halo 2. Let's do this. And $75 from Psycholize. Super hyped about the Ristar race. Brings back so many good memories. Good luck to all the runners and a big thank you to the amazing GDQ staff for putting together yet another awesome event. All right, making our way through the three on one here. And uh, mostly uh, pretty generic level. Uh, Awesome to look at, uh, but speed wise, uh, most of it the intensity is the at the snowball fight, yes. and uh, it has a pretty interesting mechanic called the fastball. Like, it's fast snowball, it doesn't have an actual name. Uh, but if you if you throw the snowball within a few few frame window, um, you can throw it really fast and negate needing to wait in between the, um, him throwing the snowball, and you just go right through. It's, uh, doing back-to-back -back fastballs is definitely the way to power through it. Oh my god. But there's quite a bit of RNG to it. <laughs> Please. Holy crap. And the okay. RNG is fun in that uh, sometimes Rystar doesn't want to make a snowball. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, he just like, so Rystar has a, an anim- Oh my god, you made me say Rystar. Ristar has an animation. Uh -oh. <laughs> Where, uh, like, for each level, and in the snow level, he makes a little snowman, and it's adorable. Uh, he can just make the snowman instead of a snowball, and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it really messes up the timing of the, the fastball and the entire rhythm of the fight, honestly. We have no idea why that happens. It's just completely RNG. <laughs> yep, as with mo almost all RNG, honestly. We don't, we don't know. It's... Probably on a power on timer, but nothing that we've been able to manipulate yet. Uh, but yeah, free on two is a is really technical. I'd say one of the more technical levels. The hybrid swimming um, level also, and uh, it's got quite a bit of precise platforming. 
not too much RNG, uh, but it does have some of it. And uh, the, the, the the hardest part is definitely the ice cliffs near the end, I'd say. Yes, definitely. Okay. Aaron got through there, and uh, the, 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 the run in there, and uh, the the reason why it's difficult is because there's an enemy in the water underneath that respawns, and you'll fall directly onto him if you fall. And it's very punishing, and the checkpoint is very far back. I do a safety strat where I only do like the the fast slope jumps on the bottom half. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone else does like the full thing, but. I'm on two hours of sleep, and I'm going to be kind to myself instead. <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely difficult. And it, it, yeah, like, for going in at the top ones, definitely makes it a little more consistent, for sure. And yeah, everybody's here at Itamore here, which uh, was another translation thing, is the difference in the, the Japanese version. It's a thing called Nekujida, which is cat tongue. Cats don't like spicy food. Every every and time uh, I, I explain what Nekujida is, people are like, that's incorrect. And then I use their explanation. I, Someone else is like, that's incorrect. So you know what? Eventually we'll Google whittle it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Google Nekujida. It didn't it didn't translate well, so they uh, they replaced it in the American version with the abominable snowman with the little cute little fez hat. But it's a pretty scripted fight. And then we get into Automaton 1 with uh, the only glitch in the game that has been known to help a runner. It's a very important distinction because we've seen plenty of glitches in this game, just never <laughs> never helpful glitches. I found one, uh, one clip that uh, is completely useless because it's below an area that we star pull over. <laughs> That's perfect. Add it, add it to the pile. <laughs> Uh, but this, yeah, this glitch uh, involves uh, grabbing the wrong direction of this of this pole and skipping about a 20 second section. Yeah, it looks like Brennan got that first try. That's awesome. I'm really, really, really bad at it, so uh, it's gonna take me a while. It's a tough one. It's it's weird because you can't really spam it. Uh, the game has an input lockout, so you have to actually rhythmically press it. Um, and that's it's pretty tough. It is a one frame, one frame grab. Yeah, looks like everybody's in Tom Kong one now. I think Cronin's in the lead here, not by too far. Oh my God, you absolute beautiful video game, you. If, <laughs> if it does like the thing it did with me, uh, that's bonk. like one frame off the bonk. Yeah. Okay, there we go. It's the bonk always feels bad because it looks really like good, you, actually, you were allowed access and then it just says no. <laughs> it's, it, it, it just like hurts my soul every time. <laughs> but uh, I ran this game at uh, AGDQ 2018 and I, I literally couldn't get that trick. <laughs> So I, I just had to like walk around. It was very sad. <laughs> I still got below estimate. That's what matters. <laughs> so we got Commander Hat here, which has a decent amount of RNG, but it cycles the, fr the, the first pattern is always the last pattern. And once you get the first pattern, it's seeded for the rest of the fight. Um, looks like it was quickly dispatched there by both Harem and Cronin though. Um, It can get out of control. It is one of those things where if you don't get the quick hit on each of the cycles, it can get real rough. Especially there's one in particular uh, where if you miss it, he will just like go up in the corner and you cannot hit him. Um, just like that machine gun, yeah, yeah. machine gun orbit. The, that ring pattern when they just sort of like clump together and drop. I find Commander one. Hat's hitbox to be questionable at best, so uh, I'm really glad that I'm no longer fighting him. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Now we're getting into a, I don't know, futuristic Aztec looking <laughs> area here with the with the Tomaton 2, which is another series of, of little gauntlets and rooms. Uh, most of them are just get to the end, to defeat the enemies, or uh, power this uh, little transporter with the crystal. Um, oh, front enemies. So let's try it. Karen got it, though. Oh. 
The only the only strat in a game that's named after me, the list strat, is a two frame window. Uh, if I miss it, it will be awkward. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of bunch of platforms in this room here, in that room there, and it's uh, it is quite punishing if you get the wrong timing. It's, uh, you can also get squished pretty easily, so it, it can it can get scary. There's a backup um, for it. So basically, if I'm like kind of rubbing against the, the bottom of it, that means that I got it, a two frame window. Um, if I'm not, then I can go under it and like kind of almost intentionally get myself squished on the right side. And if you do it correctly, you're like shoved up onto the platform and you're able to jump up there. So that's the backup, uh, but it can definitely go wrong because, you know, squishing. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting through here. A couple more screens, and then uh, we'll get to Yurinim. And yeah, it's like good. Uh, Crumbins at Yurinim now. This boss is entirely dark and pessimistic. He's a machine. Can be. <laughs> no, I think he's thrown into the box. This yeah, feels this, like a really close right? It is. This actually is really close. We're only a few screens apart um, for everybody here. And then, um, yeah, the the idea with the uh, with Yurinim is you want to manipulate his movement to stay on the ground as much as possible, so you can spam grabs on him. Um, and a lot of that has to do with um, where you'd normally jump, you kind of want to uh, walk away where you'll trigger his Hadouken kind of animation. That'll keep him on the ground and uh, you'll use iframes and kind of walk inside of him. Which looks like everybody's doing here. We have time for a donation. Yeah. Wonderful. We have $100 from Strike that says, Ristar is, in my humble opinion, one of the most underrated games of the Genesis era. I'm super happy to see you in a race here. Let's go. Thank you to the whole GDQ and the runners for another awesome event, Heart. It really is. It's just because it came out so late. I mean, most yeah. people that played it, I, I don't think I've met a single person that's played it and not liked it. I've but there one. just aren't that many people. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah. that's, that's uh, a very... Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> they have bad taste. No, you know, <laughs> <it's their own. laughs> uh, so we're making our way through Greedy's Castle here. This is uh, a little bit different than the rest of the world, too, which normally had two stages and a boss. And this is just, uh, just this ascension. Then uh, you have uh, Ivar here. We're getting close to the end already. It goes, it goes yep, really back. close here. Uh, this this boss is a perfect example of with using the grab cancels. Uh, normally, um, it's similar to Ewok, where uh, it's trying to push you to the left side of the screen. Um, instead of facing a different direction, you'll uh, grab after a grab is complete, and it will stop your momentum, and it just kind of allows you to machine gun this boss down. Generally, not too much of a problem. But sometimes right. it can it can be scary. <laughs> Once you get hit, sometimes you can get out of the rhythm. It can be rough. Got a couple All close right. calls there. From in here on 3D. Ooh. So time coming up for Chrono. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are coming up on time for Cronin. There, there it is. Awesome. I also got the perfect Ionis fight. Wow, that was super close. I was a little bit delayed on on hands. 
but I believe we're not even close right out. I'm <laughs> probably a few seconds over here, and that was really close. Wow. Wow. Time is coming up for me as well. Um, hinting at a sequel that never happened. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah, it does happen at some point. It'd be awesome if there was some kind of rest our revival. All right, that was Ristar. That was that was really that close. Was yeah, that was actually a really really tight race. Where should I lose all my time? <laughs> Like, I got bad OSAT RNG. I think that's partially it, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, and I, I it took a few attempts on, um, on, uh... The metronome swing. Yeah, the metronome swing. That's right, yeah. Yeah, honestly, very, very solid race by everybody yeah. here. Great job, everyone. 29, 28 to 29 minutes, very, very, very solid. Uh... Thank you all for watching. Uh, have a great one. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much to all the runners for that fantastic Ristar race. I hope everyone learned how to pronounce it and that it wasn't confusing at all that different people say it different ways. <laughs> but... Uh, I just wanted to announce that a bunch of bid wars and incentives have just been open. So if you head to gamesdonequick.com, click on the tracker, you'll be able to catch some of those, including Fire Emblem's Three Houses, four-way routes bid war. Yes, three houses, four routes. Check it out. Uh, we also have a combo exhibition for Streets of Rage 4, which has opened up. We need to reach $40,000 to see that happening. And you still can choose a ton of nicknames for Pokemon Black and White as well. So head on over to the tracker and see all the amazing things you can put your donations towards. And just a reminder that every single donation also goes towards our cumulative $1 million goal for our fourth bonus game, Halo 2. We have $15 from Tuca Base that says, hello from the Portuguese Restream. We're really excited for Rystar, and I'm so proud of you, Shimei. Here's for a good race, and good luck to all the runners. And with that, we are going over to a prize segment with Mr. Game & Shout. Yay! Good. Come on, chat. I want you to do it with me. Camera guys, I'm looking at the two of you. Producers, I can see you in the back. Get with me on this morning, everyone, and welcome to Summer Games Done Quick 2021 Online. I am Mr. Game and Shout, and I, I'm still, I, I know I'm like three or four hours in the past now. I'm still hooked up on that run. That was amazing. All right. We're going to show you some prizes. We have some really amazing stuff, and it is getting down to the wire if you want to get your hands on these. All of the prizes that I'm going to be talking about right now, with the exception of our grand prizes, are only available through the end of this X-Men 2 run that is coming up next. So if you want to get your hands on any of these awesome items, make sure you're getting your donations in soon. You can find for more information about all of the prizes that, was, that we have available now and going out through the rest of the marathon on the website, gamesdonequick.com. Click on the prizes link up in the top left. That will get you to a page with all of the information, and you'll be good to go from there. Okay, so things that we have right now. Let's start off with a couple of things that we have for a $5 minimum donation. would get you entered to win these. First up, from Count Gooby, we have, I actually really love this thing, a 
mouse perler. We have a little computer mouse perler um, rendered in really amazingly good detail. I was looking at some photos of this uh, that someone had taken with a screenshot of their mouse cursor next to it, and it was legitimately hard to tell which was the perler and which was the mouse cursor. $5 minimum donation gets you entered to win this. Uh, thank you again, Count Gooby, for sending that in. Also, $5 minimum donation from Iggy Zig. I, I will never understand where Iggy gets this stuff. It's incredible. We have a Fight Crab original soundtrack. I don't know that there's anything really more to say about it than that, other than $5 minimum donation. This could be yours. So please, again, only available through the end of X-Men 2. Please get that in soon. Also available for a $5 minimum donation from our friends at Shuggle Up Sketches, and I took these out of the plastic earlier because I learned my lesson yesterday. We have some sticker sheets for nerds featuring a bunch of adorable stickers from a variety of games. So we have Final Fantasy. We've got some Studio Ghibli stickers here. Try and keep my fingers out of the way so you can actually see what's going on. We have uh, stickers from Mario. We have Pokemon starters from a variety of generations. We have Legend of Zelda stickers. And we're back to Final Fantasy. $5 minimum donation gets you in to win all five of these sticker sheets. We have a couple of items available right now that you can get entered into for a $10 minimum donation. I don't have them here with me in the studio. Um, we have a pair of acrylic charms for Untitled Goose Game. Uh, just really cute little charms. You can put them on your phone, put them on your keychain, featuring the goose. You can see a picture of them on the website. $10 minimum donation gets you entered to win those. We also have, I believe, a pair of iron-on patches from Untitled Goose Game. Uh, the charms were courtesy of our friend L. Houtson, and the patches are from our friend Wolf Shadow. So $10 minimum donation will get you entered in to win those. Uh, we have, I believe we have a goose. I believe we have a no gooses sign. Um, would look great on pretty much anything you want to put them on. And if you win, you can choose whatever you like. $10 minimum donation gets you entered to win those. We have, from our friends at Fangamer and from Carrie Fry, whose work I've been a fan of for ages, another thing I don't have here, uh, but we have a Slime Rancher Slimepedia. Uh, hardcover book, I think it's about 90, 100 pages, uh, featuring notes from the original owner of the ranch, along with all kinds of information to take you from just starting to really being an expert at the game. $15 minimum donation gets you entered to win that. Also from Fangamer, we have this really adorable uh, Slime Rancher Collector's Edition, limited edition. This is numbered out of 4,000. Um, along with the game, you get a cute little coin bag, nice and shiny. And there is a handkerchief in here. I think there's something else in there as well. Uh, this can be yours for a $20 minimum donation, gets you automatically entered to win this. Now, it wouldn't be a uh, silly block without some silly blocks. I just made that up. We're going to go with it. But this time, it's true. Courtesy of Ritz Blues, we have silly blocks, perler blocks. So I'm going to show you these a couple of ways. I've got one of them. Actually, I'll start down here because the cam's already here. So we have all of these panels. There are a dozen in total featuring scenes from the various games that we've just had as part of the silly block. Uh, I somehow managed to turn almost all of these upside down. It is, it is the gift of prizes. They will never be right side up. This is just something that you have to learn. Um, the panels actually combine together into these boxes. And I've got this one here partially assembled. I've got the lid of it uh, up by the computer behind me. But you can actually assemble these panels into this really cool 3D box, goose side up, um, I actually haven't seen this sort of like perler construction before, so this is really fascinating. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much, Ritz Blues. $20 minimum donation gets you entered to win the Silly Blocks. Uh, also out of the Silly Block, from Annie Just 3, $25 minimum donation gets you entered to win the Faces of Evil Cross Stitch. Uh, I think we all know Link Faces of Evil as one of the most widely known uh, Zelda games, uh, the CDI being a very uh, uh, prolific platform. Um, something that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. I don't have to sit here and 
and tell you about it. Uh, $25 minimum donation gets you entered to win that cross stitch. Thank you so much, Annie Just3, for sending that in to us. Also for $25, this one just got into the studio yesterday, uh, and I'm still really excited. $25 minimum donation from Larissa Hughes. Thank you so much for sending this in. We have this gorgeous hand-painted wall scroll uh, that is titled The Goose and the Colossus. So you have the goose with butter knife ready for battle. You have sort of the smoky, like, mountain scene with a colossus coming up over the horizon. This has got to be something like three feet long. Uh, you all should know by now what a huge fan I am of art that you can put on walls. This would be amazing to have in your home. And $25 minimum donation gets you in to win this. But again, all these prizes that I've just shown you, only available through the end of X-Men 2, our next game. So if you would like to get entered for these prizes, get those donations in soon. Now, I can't talk about prizes without talking about our grand prizes, and we actually have two grand prizes available this event. First up, from our friends at Heroic Replicas, they have stepped up once again. $250 cumulative donation gets you entered to win your choice of a custom Heroic Replicas replica. Now, what do I mean by cumulative donation? Every time you donate throughout the course of this week, we are adding up all of your donations together. If that total meets or exceeds $250, you are entered to win both of our grand prizes. The custom replica, there is a list of options available. You can find it on our website, gamesdonequick.com. It is a huge selection. Bunch of items from the Legends of Zelda, uh, Master Sword, Hylian Shield, Goddess Sword, Fierce Deity Sword, Chris Sword. Uh, we have Megaton Hammer, I keep forgetting that one. Uh, light scale trident. We have a Buster Sword that is massive. Uh, we have a Zora guitar or bass. Your choice of instrument, your choice of color on that. $250 minimum donation gets you entered to win that. Also, uh, from our friends at Sky Tech Gaming, just arrived yesterday, we have the Mark 9 gaming PC. I am going to be gushing about this during a segment later on. I cannot wait to tell you about this. I've actually had a chance to get into it and you know, take a look around at the construction. It is wonderfully built, uh, absolute rocket ship. 5800X processor, 3070 Ti graphics card. I don't know where they found it. 32 gigs of memory, one terabyte SSD. Whatever you need to do with a computer, this is going to be able to going to be able to do it for you. I saw somebody commenting yesterday that they think we could run the whole stream out of this thing. I don't know. Maybe we could. It's amazing. $250 minimum donation throughout the marathon, a cumulative donation, gets you entered to win that. Okay. I think that's going to be it for this prize segment. Again, you can find out all of the details about these prizes at the website, gamesdonequick.com. While you're there, check out the incentives that we have. We're still trying to reach that hundred or hundred, sorry, hundred, one million dollar to donation total to unlock our next bonus game. That is going to be Halo 2. Really looking forward to that run, so please, everyone, get your donations in for that. You can also put money towards the incentives that we have open. I just heard Frozen Flygon say that we had a whole bunch more just open up. I'm keeping an eye on the Sonic Adventure 2 battle incentive. I think Dark is still on the lead on that, but we'll see what wins out. Uh, also, a reminder, if you have Amazon Prime, that means you have Prime Gaming. If you have Prime Gaming, that means you have a free sub every month. Uh, and you can give that to us if you'd like. Uh, GDQ is donating all of the revenue that we receive this month, July, uh, from subs and bits minus taxes to Doctors Without Borders. So if you would like to support Doctors Without Borders at no cost to you and get access to our uh, stream chat and our amazing emotes, please consider giving us that Prime Gaming sum. We would definitely appreciate it. All right. That is it. Thank you again, everybody. I have been Mr. Game and Shout. This has been Prizes. I'm going to hand you back over to Frozen Flygon as we get ready for this X-Men 2 run with A-Frame. Thank you all so much. We'll see you later.